I know for a fact you will you will feel these for sure. Well, I'm excited to see them. Are you ready? Are you ready to see? I'm, I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So let me take this off. Peace. This is Just Blaze. I'm teaming up with custom sneaker queen Caddy Custom, and we're making one of one kicks for a collection of mega stars and legends in our culture. Our guest today is El Capo himself, an OG member of the Diplomats who has only continued to elevate his bars over the decades. He's a true trendsetter and one of rap's first rock stars. Can Caddy and I create a shoe that will win over the King of Drip? Will our reflection of his influences and energy match up to his high flying standards? Let's find out. Welcome to Fresh Pit. Give it up for the man himself, the one and only Jim Jones. <laughs> How are you, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Pleasure. So, but before we even get into this caddy, what you got on? I got on, you know, the Caddy Customs original Green Goblins. That oh, you okay. made those? Yeah, Jordan Levis. I was wondering. I yeah. said, I've never seen those. I before. know, I made them. I nice. made them. You cheating. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm pushing some uh, undefeated Jordan 4s. Yeah, them was pricey right there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. People don't even know that. So, I call these the tuition 4s? College yeah, tuition for us. hundred percent. hundred percent. What you got on over there though? Those are fresh. Is some sky blue air maxes. I don't be knowing the name of sneakers. I'll be color coordinating still. Right. Yeah, them fresh you though. Those is hard though. Yeah, I, super you know what fresh. I really love? The graph paper right yeah. here. Yeah, fire ah. on the check, right? Yeah. yeah. The other side is a different color. You know. Oh, I didn't even oh. oh yeah, that's hard. Yeah, that's hard. Honestly, you the drippiest. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you know. You drip from the from the flow to the dough. <laughs> Like, seriously, and I love your swag, Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Like, diving in deep and, you know, getting to know you know you more, listening to your music, listening, to, you know, watching your interviews and things like that. Like, creating this shoe was so much fun. And from doing my research, you know, I could kind of guess that your, your favorite sneakers is what? Air Force One, Air Max. I know yeah. you like to be comfortable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, good pair of Air Ones, good pair of Max. Okay. It's good. That's it's good. good. And I know when you see these sneakers, you're going to be like, okay. I mean, you just got to be. You just got to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to, like, you know, bo boast or, bra or brag, but honestly, I, I, I know for a fact you will, you will feel these, for sure. Well, I'm excited to see them. Are you ready? Are you ready to see? I'm, I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So let me take this off. All right, let me take my glasses off. Yeah, take them off. All right. Yeah. Let me see what we got here. <laughs> These are pretty dope. I'm glad you like them. I like how you added the chain gang. Yeah. You got the roses on the check. I got to give you your flowers. You got the VL on the front with the bats and the drip. Mm-hmm. All black with the red. You and, got the and sparkle. May I add, that's reflective. That's oh, reflective that's three, material. That's 3M three, that's three too? Yeah, yeah, that's 3M too. That's 3M, you heard? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Can't. I didn't even put my phone in. Yeah, put the phone flash on it. Let me see. Let me, let me try this out. <laughs> Ooh, I seen it. You see it? <laughs> let me see that. Ooh, came out ooh, white. Yeah. Yo, that came out nice. Fire. Wow. No, yo, that came out nice. <laughs> that's crazy. It's fire. That's nice, right? These are fire. Yeah, yeah. I need, a, I need a good pair, like leather cargoes to go with these. Ooh, absolutely. I can see you swagging those out for sure. Could do something with these. Yeah. I'm gonna let you know when I pull them off. Oh please, yeah. Please, please. Oh and yeah. I need a picture of all that. And then I put them in a, a nice case. Nice. Nice. Put nice. Them in nice. Sneak the room. These are actually pretty fly. I like them. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do. So, you know. Um, I let him just loosen them up. Yeah. So you scored. I scored. Okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> so we want to talk about um, the inspiration behind the shoe, the various parts of the shoe, because everything on this shoe stands for something that means something. It's not just a collection of colors. Um, but the vibe, you know, where the energy started is very much, uh, you know, your whole rock star energy. You know, where did that, where do you feel like that came from fashion wise? I was always edgy, like just from being a rebel. Then um, 
when I met Chrissy, um, she she helped me kind of uh, revamp myself and right. with the whole dressing and dressing a little. She was the person to introduce me to Chrome Hearts. I had no idea what Chrome Hearts was, but she knew I was into this whole rock rap star thing. So she was like, "You right. want to be a, a rock star? I'm gonna put you on to the right. to the real rock star stuff." Um, uh, I was on social media, and you know they, they show memories and whatnot. And the video for uh, "Let Me Know" had a uh, had popped up in the memory. Man, and I was like, "You had like the the size forty camo camo <laughs> pants with the uh, you know with with the with the camo jacket <laughs> hopping over the fence like yo killer." Yeah. And this was maybe about a month ago, and it just it really got me to thinking like your traject your trajectory, you know, in that in that progression. Um, for the most part, coming up from Harlem, you had to be flawed, of or they was gonna snap on you if no you was, if you wanted to be inside of that circle of people that was moving through. You definitely had to stay on your p's and q's. And then watching all the hustlers coming up, they was always fly, always had the fly cars, always had the fly girls. Like it was just embedded in you coming outside. It was all the rappers used to want to be hustlers. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's how it went. Um, it's a little bit different now, but um, we come from the era of this can't fly. It's interesting that he's saying how it's a little bit different now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people still get fresh now, but they get fresh from a different perspective. Yeah, it's a lot of different ways people get fresh. But for the most part, I tell people in this game, it's either you Kanye in or you Jim Jones, and those are the two different variables, or you mixing them both together. It's nobody else there could say they're actually leading the way when it comes to that. Atlanta got their own different style of dress. Right. Like, right. It's just Atlanta. Right. You heard? Like, right. You see that look, you know what that is. They mix in. Everything together, you huh. dig? Mm -hmm. So come to this fashion, man, and then come to the drip. There's a few people that I actually look at come in, in the game that are really doing pretty good. I don't, I don't invent it. I just like to look good. Yeah. You know what I mean? For but so yeah. you said there's a few others. Who be your top five in terms of being able to put together? Yeah. Top, top five, but you got to put Fab in there. Cool. Okay, Fab. So we gonna start. We gonna we gonna start with Fab. Okay. Right. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, G Herbo gets. Super fly. Okay. 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 Uh, I agree. Right. Yeah, and I he, agree. They don't, be, they don't be looking at my ball, but my ball be coming off. Yeah. You heard? <laughs> you know who else get fly though? Who get fly? Kodak Black. Y'all gotta mm. watch him. Kodak, Kodak be going yeah, on. Yeah, Kodak, yeah. you gotta watch him. He got his he own does. flavor, but his he shit does. be he be in some shit. Yeah, okay. He does. You heard? Uh. Little baby, I give baby a little baby. That's what oh, yeah, he for always sure. he always got he always always got that shit on. Um, who else? Uh, Two chains is another one. I yeah. put him next to Fab, like OG drippers, like niggas you ain't never gonna catch slipping. Right, Definitely okay. like Fab and Two Chains. Um, right. One of the things that I talked about with Caddy was, you know, a lot of rappers have superpowers, right? You have some guys who are great songwriters, some guys who are great lyricists, some guys who are great performers, and then you have some guys who just light up the room when they walk in, they light up the stage when the uh, when they step on it. And that was the reason why we went with the 3M Reflected. Yeah. Because when the light hits, it shines. And to me, that was just superpower. I mean, I wanted to catch this detail, you know, with the VL print, but also with the diamonds, because you have the uh, the mine and diamonds joint you're doing now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I want to make sure we represented that. Yeah, yeah. Podcast on uh, right. United Masters called Mine and Diamonds, teaching people about financial literacy and changes people's idea of what generational wealth is and showing yeah. people how to get all into business. Why is it important for you to impart that knowledge on folks now? Because of these are things that wasn't taught to us. We usually the last to find out everything and mm -hmm. right now the way everything is moving with this with everything in the society as far as cryptocurrency nfts digital money um we finally got a chance to be at the forefront and not get left behind so this is why i'm urging everybody to start doing their due diligence on what's going on exactly and you have your own cryptocurrency yes too. capital coin you capital can go out buy some capital coin um, i love that let me gotta do that so, you know, you've kind of taken on this teacher role, so to speak. Um, you know, 
And one of the features that we actually have on the shoe, check this out when you get a minute, but so this material is actually chalkboard material. Made out of chalkboard. Like you can actually take chalk <laughs> and write on, right on the shoe yeah. and then erase it. You, you got a stick, you got, you got chalk on you? I got chalk on me, look, go ahead. You got ahead. chalk on me? Do the honors, do the honors. <laughs> and you can write anything, you know? Ooh, what you writing? Caddy is the best. A <laughs> chapel <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, going off of teachers, right? Like, you feel like there's anybody or any individuals who kind of helped you aside from the business side, teach you how to move through the business? Was it, you feel like it was a lot of tr just trial and error on your own, or yeah. was mistakes? That? Mistakes is what I learned from. Right, I didn't have nobody in my corner, or, you know, OGs that I had that I really was paying attention to or wanted to pay attention to. Right, I just learned from all the mistakes I made. That's nice. Can you tell us or impart on on us somebody of mistakes you made that actually led to better experiences later? I felt like just coming in the game, I was just everything I did was a mistake. But at that point in time, making them type of mistakes I was making was lucrative and we was getting paid for that. So nobody right. was telling us the right thing to do because everything we did was right, whether it was wrong or right. not. Right. Whether it was wrong or not, the end result was right. Right. Because you were hot and anytime you hot, they'll let you do anything in the world and that was the lesson that I learned. Because mm -hmm. when you hot, literally, they turn somebody turn around and let you kick them in the ass. Pow, they don't care. Oh, they kick me in my ass. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> But them That's same people funny. just waiting to see how long you're going to stay hot. Because when you get cold and you got to come down, they're going to give you the hardest kick in your ass that you ever got. That was right. I just learned a lot from how to treat people and the moves I've been making as I got older. Uh, things, the way I was treating people back then, definitely not the way that I treat people now. Right. right. I, I had to learn how to treat everybody the same. Like when President Obama, was, like he treats the janitor the same when he's like, that's how I feel. And I've always right. been like that, but my mentality for certain things in certain places was, wasn't was right. And then when they put the lights on you, everybody gets a bit jaded. Right. Money brings more power, and I was already ignorant, so it was a lot I learned. Right, yeah, you know, it's one thing that I've always had to maintain in my, you know, early years as a producer, and even once we became successful, was we can flex a little bit because we have 10 records on the radio right now but we still got to maintain either the work ethic mm -hmm. and maintain people feeling like they're respected, right? Because if they don't feel like they're respected or if you're difficult to work with, they're going to continue while you hot. But as soon as you don't have those 10 records on the radio, right. your, phone, your phone stop ringing. Mm -hmm. See, I just came in the game like a wrecking ball. Right. I didn't have no rules. Right. I, didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't have no rules at right. all. Only rule I had was try to figure out how to get my records on the radio and try to figure out how to get my videos on BET and MTV. Right. And that was the number one rule. I didn't have nobody teaching me certain things and things like that, so. But you didn't even have people, I mean, I'm saying this as a positive. You didn't even have people teaching you the basics of audio recording. Yeah, I remember seeing you in the office with the Pro Tools in the backpack. Mm. With the laptop, but being ignorant like, doesn't mean that you're not smart. No, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like, you, know what I mean? like, you didn't have the technical training. Oh no, I learned. I, I, but one thing, you, one thing I could do is I could learn any, any right. anything in the world. You put right. you put me in the room, probably going to excel quicker than anybody. I don't care what it is. Right. Love that. Her, so it doesn't matter. Even 2002, when you saw me, like I was telling somebody the other day, as the first, I I just fucked the whole game up in creating. To travel in studio pack and in right. turn that made Rockefeller start cutting people's recording budgets and start putting studio packs in all the offices inside of wow. right. Rockefeller. Remember That's what that? We're talking about, yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, but that's just the urge of me wanting to learn and try to get into some new shit that I know I can make some money. And fast forward, I'm doing the same thing now as I got quarantine studios, which makes it like deja vu from when you see me the first time, because now I figured out I've created a technology that AWS has built out and I figured out how to record virtually in real time with the least amount of latency. You don't have to leave the comforts of my home. And matter of fact, nobody has to leave the comforts mm. of their home. And anything a recording studio could do or a record label could do, we could do right on the screen and oh, nobody got to leave. Right. Yeah. So it's a way for artists to collaborate remotely. Anywhere. Right. Nice. As long as you got Wi-Fi. My, I'm, I'm, my engineer lives in Atlanta. I'll be in the house. <laughs> I could tag you in. You could do the beat. Nice. See me record 
all simultaneously. I ain't got to do nothing. Like we in the studio. Right, it's like you in the room together. But it's all virtual. Right. So, like, circling back a little bit, you know, because I was there for some of that initial transition, you know, to you becoming an artist and watching you record some of them early records, but then hearing them break on the radio. Shit, you gave me my first beat. Right. Huh. And we built this city. Built this city. Yo, I, <laughs> you, you walked in the room one day. You said, yo, Just, I got the idea. I need you to take that old 80s rock record. We built this city. Make me something out of that. I said, I already got it. Here you go. So no, what's it? <laughs> Well, he's. I've been to that sample. It just I didn't even think nobody would know what that what that sample is. Right. He's like, hold on, let me find it. He definitely found it. I went in the other room and did it that night. We built this. Right. Song. So, like, to go from that stage to like you just mentioned a minute ago, learning how to get your records on the radio. Like, what was your avenue for eventually landing those records to play at a power or a hot? You know, that early on in your I, career. I kind of just watched everything that the record labels had Cam doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there the whole time and I was doing a lot of the work behind the scenes. So just watching the people the record labels would call, watching the companies mm -hmm. the record labels would use, and nine times out of ten, if they had to get in touch with Cam, those people had to speak to me. <laughs> speak to right. me, right. So I just kept all that and then when I actually started doing music, like what well, people don't know, I started doing music in baseline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This was where Jim Jones was created at. I did no music nowhere else. Cam and them used to try to have me do Music, it never worked. Digger used to be mad as shit. Like, that nigga don't sound good, man. I'm not, I don't want to give him none of my beats. I'd be mad as shit. And then, um, remember one night in Baseline, I remember the whole story. Uh, Guru, not Guru, what's the other dude that's from Bahamas? Shane. Shout out to Shane. Yeah. Shout out to Shane. I believe Shane was in there one night. Everybody went to the All Star game. It was in Philly. You don't yep. remember that yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Everybody, I, everybody went, went in the vans to Philly. I'll never forget it. Somebody had owed me some money. I wasn't gone because I didn't have no money. I ended up staying in the studio. Shane was in it. Like, Shane load up a beat. I ended up doing a whole record. Now I'm super hyped, like, because nobody has ever heard me in a whole record. Right. Okay. I'm dumb hype. <laughs> ended up getting a call. The kid that owed me the money, bring me the money. I fly to Philly. <laughs> just, just to go play Cam their record in the parking lot right. after the All Star game, like yo, I made my first record. That That's was like dope. one of the biggest moments in my life that that day because I kind of figured out the loop how to get into the game and start making money like Cam and Mason them was doing. Like I was smart enough. I was managing. I was directing. I was engineering. Nice. I was like I was doing everything, making a shitload of money from all angles. Right. But I wasn't still getting that cash that I seen Cam and Mace picking up 15, 20 on the back end, 30, 40, 50,000 a show. Right. That shit was like, whoa. Right. right. I gotta figure, I gotta that figure this out. That hit different than from some engineering checks and invoices what? and whatnot. Yeah. Right. What? Right. Like, right. What? And, and then I, I figured that loop out and that, that was the, that was when Jim Jones was born and after that was, yo, Josh, let me get a B. Yo, right. Just, like, I figured it out, and I no was talking after that. Um, that's dope, that's well, you know, dope. so like one of the things uh, behind the show, and it's physically represented here, is you know we're not here to tear anybody down. Anybody that that sits on this stage with us, we're here to give them their flowers. Absolutely, right? You know, and obviously the flowers are represented throughout the uh, yeah. throughout the roses, hand painted, roses, exactly. roses, all hand painted. Oh, I'm all about them roses. Yeah, you all about the roses well, on like, the album cover. Yeah, everything. You know, well, like I said, that the El, the, uh, the El Capo album visually was a was a big inspiration for us. Like, you know what's great about that album cover? Your face ain't on it. Mm -hmm. Um Ooh, that's what I was that that's crazy. What I was, that's what I was telling Damn, you. Damn, let me see. Yo. Wow, that's nice. Can I can I touch it? Yeah, I'm gonna take it off. Oh you gonna take it off? You gonna let me We run? need a picture of that on the uh oh, that's crazy. That's what a, a key is some change to like Damn can I put it on? Oh man, hold up. Hey. hey! I'm 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 Queen Capo. You feel me? <laughs> no, no disrespect, Chrissy. I love you. You know what I'm saying? But this is this is crazy. It's heavy, yo. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're the king of the drip. <laughs> I swear, you feel that? That's crazy. Wow. But how but how how ill is it that the imagery? <laughs> What's up? Ask me anything. Ask me anything. What's up? What's up? You know what I'm saying? How is it, Ill, is it that the imagery that inspired the shoe is now sitting right in front of us in the physical form? That's crazy. Like, 
So you know the great thing about that album cover, it doesn't have your face on it, uh-huh. but you know it's your album, right? It consists of a lot of image imagery that we come to associate with you at this point. And I feel like that's when it, when an album cover becomes true art, when it doesn't have to have Jim Jones' face, Jim Jones' name. It's just well done, tasteful imagery. That right. was my that was my Prince moment. Right, right. You know, Prince had the logo and the, the symbol. And right, that was it. and that was it. So in terms of giving flowers, who do you feel is underrated in the game right now that you would that you would give flowers to? I don't know, man. Most of the people that's popping right now are doing pretty good. And there are a few people I probably think should get a better chance. See, the game is is it's different now. Like it's I don't I, I believe it's people out there that need more chances because you know how the game is all rigged. Like, I don't, let's not get it twisted. None of this happened by chance. These labels right. still got the upper hand and they pushing for what they want to push for. So therefore, it leaves a little bit of slots for people that are really talented to really pop and shine. And it's even worse now because everything goes on numbers. So if your numbers ain't enough, they definitely ain't paying no attention. I mean, no label. I don't care if you was Michael Jackson that came back to life, they gonna be like, damn, that's right. Mike. What's his, what's his Instagram number? Yeah. Yeah. What's his analytics, like? analytics look like? Right, like right. It's, it's kind of crazy now. Um, wow. That's one of the uh, one of the disadvantages I feel like we're at with everything being social media driven now is we've kind of removed the idea and the concept of the A and R part of the uh, business. You know, it's, it's been removed. Like there is no more artist development. Right. They had to exploit the artists fully right now. And they know that these young artists are so reckless right now that if they do get some money out of them, they might not be here for that long of a run even because it's so, it's like the wild, wild west out here. Yeah. You know, I just urge all the artists to stay safe out there. Don't fall for the, for the record label tricks. Try to maintain your ownership, at least a partnership. Just don't give everything up and shit like that. Um, right. The way records are moving now, you. You don't need the label, but I don't want to say that because the label is a good partner to have if you know what you're doing. Speaking of partnerships, you know, part of what this uh, EK, so you know, this is actually like the heart rate, you know, when you're in a hospital. Clear. Yeah, Yeah. the the EKG meter, like that's really what this represents because in a lot of ways, you know, a lot of the movements you've been a part of, you were the heart of them. You know what I mean? Especially like obviously going back to Dipset. You look at certain groups throughout history, right? Like. For example, like a Tribe Called Quest. It was actually four members. But only three of them was all ever on the records. It was you know, Ali, Shahi, Muhammad, Tip, and Fife. But then there was always the fourth member, Jerobi. People would ask, you know, what does Jerobi do? He's the glue. You know, if you don't have the glue of the group, you don't really have the group, even if they're not necessarily on records. Where would you say uh, you felt like your role was and Dipset being that you initially weren't a performing artist. If I was the heart, Killer was the brains, and Jewels and Zeke were the limbs. Mm. I like that. Rap Voltron. Yeah. So it couldn't work without any of us. Rap right. without any of the parts. You know, it's uh, one of the other things that I was saying, and part of the other reason why we decided on this silhouette for the shoe is because it almost, you kind of answered the question I was going to ask, but it almost feels like a military boot. It's the air. But it almost feels like a military boot. Right. Definitely give you that feel. Yeah. Right. And y'all, you know, one of the things that I always admired about y'all was it was almost run like military ranking, but not ranking in the sense of one above the other. It was more like the analogy you put it, where these were all different officers that were in charge of this unit. Yeah. You know, and, and carried and carried their own weight. The and that, uh, that's how we carried it. Right. We definitely carried ourselves in. Same format as the army would. Like, right. Uh, right. Well, even down to the, like, I mean, like, if you look at the first album cover, it's clearly military inspired. You know, what was the video we all had? I think it was like the Aviators. Was it Salute? But that was the photo shoot from the um, Diplomatic Community album when we right. was at the private airport, had the private planes on, we had the air hat and all the aviator gear on with That's the right. and all right. that type okay. of shit. Right. Caddy, you came across an interesting yeah. story you know, that I wasn't aware of. Yeah, that you know, sick PR, your photographer, you know, he was, that's him right there? Oh, wow. what's up? So he saved your life. You know what I'm saying? And that was inspiring to me because I was watching the interview and you was like, yeah, you learned, you've been knowing CPR when you was a kid because of your sister. And she, I guess she had a, like a heart condition or whatever, but like being able to save people's lives in that moment, how, how did you feel knowing like you got to help your mans out, knowing like, I'm going to just take care of this? 
I can't say that. It felt like God put his hands on me and I was able to put my hands on my nice. friend. Wasn't nothing that I just, I couldn't tell you. It just shocked me and then snapped into action. And You just did what you had to do. Another thing that we have here on the, uh, on, on this down here, if you notice, the EKG has a little bit of a glow to it. Yeah. A little sparkle. Right. Yeah. But uh, where I got the idea from that from, you remember, you remember that movie, The Last Dragon? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember Bruce Leroy was looking for the glow when he finally, when he finally realized he was the master, he had the glow around him, right? Right. And so I likened that to Jim's superpower is his aura. You know what I mean? Like, would you feel, would you, what would you say it is about you that allows you to, like, where does that aura come from? I would say my mom's. Nice. Okay. If you have my mom, she got the same aura. Yeah. Mm. Any place she walk in, she gonna light it up. Yeah. She definitely gonna be the center of attention now because she wants to, because that's just the way it is. That's who she is. I think they were just born in me and her instilling all type of confidence and right. telling me I was handsome and all these good things when I was younger. Yeah. And I kept that stride going. I kept kept me walking tall. Kept me right. feeling like I was a man from a from a young kid and right. just had to do with a lot of confidence. Not cocky, just confidence. And That's dope. the difference. That's dope. Everybody should have that. Straight up, like, cause it seems like you've been rapping more lately. I feel mm. like you went from, <laughs> you know, you took the break, you did the reality TV, and you're doing a lot of other things, but you've been rap back rapping your ass off. Why is that? It's some personal I got to prove for myself. Okay. Also things, I said I want to prove to the game, but you know, I've been in this shit for a long time. And for the most part, my actions were louder than my music. Right. You know what I mean? And Feel that. Now, it feels like my music is just as loud as my actions. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know, but I'm st I'm going hard, right. bro. Yeah. You dig? Right. Yeah, we see it, that. And it feels good. Before, I used to consider music like homework, and now I'm more eager to do it than I used to do it before. Right. You know right. What I mean? That's a good right. way to look at it, yeah. It's like, well, you know, in anything, you know, in terms of natural talent, it's like a muscle. You know, the more you exercise it, the more you flex it, the more you flex it, the stronger it gets. Yeah, yeah and I wasn't the most talented person, but I was very consistent, and I was... Well, I maintain, um, that's what I learned this past year, when you can't stay motivated, stay consistent, and that's been my whole life. Hello, right. hello. You know what I mean? That's words to live by. For real. Indeed. Another point with these shoes, and this, co this goes across all of them, you know, none of them physically look the same. Uh -huh. They all, you know, have various- uh, Have their own identity. Right, uh -huh. but they all share the same idea of standing on your foundation, right? You see a lot of this stuff is based on your history and who you are. But in this case, we took it literal in terms of standing on your foundation. Yeah. If you take a look here, uh, you're going to take that one. Can you see what it is? Maybe kind of hard to see because we have, it's a high top shoe. But um, what you actually have there is a map of Harlem. A map of Harlem. That's crazy. You yeah. like that? That's crazy. <laughs> That's dope. That's Harlem, dope. Harlem is the playground. In terms of your foundation, and your roots, what does Harlem mean to you in that aspect? Harlem means a lot to me. It's one of the places that helped create who I am, helped me come into being a man. Um, there's just so much that I learned from Harlem. Um, most of my lessons were from Harlem and just watching everybody, how they move and watching myself, how they move. Um, I can't really explain it. like. Right. No, the, I know it's the, a tough, it's the, a tough the, thing to explain. The, the love relationship I have for Harlem is somewhat of me being in love with a female. Right. Like, okay. That's the type of I, I, I love I have for it. And, nice. And I mean that in, like, I argue with myself about Harlem. Some days it's good about Harlem. <laughs> right. It's just that, but for the most part, this is why a lot of my efforts now today are to giving back towards the community. Right. And showing these kids that there's something better you could do out here and just giving them a chance to look at somebody who came from the same situations as they did, no different. And I kind of figured out the loop and, and these are a lot of the things that I want to show kids coming up after me and even the ones that's older than me and things like that, like this, 
something better that we could do than right. us, than what we've been learning in Harlem all these years. Right. Okay, so basically, all right, this is the question I got to ask. Did I match your style with this shoe? Like, is this something you would wear? This is something I would wear in a video. It's nothing I would wear outside. This okay. Is like a, this is like a, a statement piece and things like that. The outfit got to be totally, totally right. I probably, like I said, I'd probably do some leather black cargo pants. Ooh. Good chain gang. Okay. Figure figure it out, but definitely I would definitely wear it in the video, and then I put it in the glass case, like I said. But you, go ahead. You captured everything. El Capo inspired all of this from the That's roses what I'm to talking the VL about. to the bats and all the other intricates. Chalk paper, the chalk, well, that's the, the, the chalk, the chalk paper, whatever that <laughs> is. Hard, is. Right? Yo, I remember I did that in my son's room when I gave him, a, when he was younger, I gave him a new room and they put the, that Chalkboard wall? Yeah, and they was, had an artist come draw and all that type of stuff, so it's pretty dope. The heartbeat, the roses, the 3M, they all did that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you it. like Appreciate it, for it. sure. The map of Harlem and inside is dope. Absolutely, I love it. I like, the show. Like I like the concept of the show too and things like that. I understand. I Yay. thought it was a, another sneaker show. We talk about how many sneakers I got and all this shit. But right. it seems to have a dope twist on it. And where you're coming from is pretty dope. So Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank Salute you. Thank on you. That. For real. Now I got another question. What's up? These are your pair. But if I was to make another pair, mm -hmm. how much would you sell your sneakers for? Me? Mm -hmm. I would sell them as an NFT. Ooh. <laughs> And <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking the about. The person who buys the NFT will end up getting the physical pill also. And then That's what I'm saying. Right do what Absolutely. Do Absolutely. No doubt. That's dope. I mean, you actually can NFT every pair of sneaker that you make for people up here. That's what you actually should do. That I know you'll have an NFT, but you can start a whole new NFT with that. Um, if you're making these one-off sneakers. Cause oh, that's yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Yep, yep. You See, he know. Place. He know. About, he the NFT man. Yo, man, thank you for coming through. I appreciate yeah, you. It's been a long a time. Good to catch up. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Nah, the conversation is dope. Yeah. Nah, come on, man. So I always come in here, you know, after the fact, just to really check you, get a vibe check on you. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the overall product? Now it's dope. I love what you're doing with the show. I love how you're bringing the show together with the sneakers. These sneakers is dope. The 3M. I'm a fan of 3M, so you're really taught me. You're really got me with 3M and shit like that. And the fact that she's including the chain gang with the roses, like you're really mm -hmm. kind of embodied the capo. You dig? Yeah, man. Oh, the way I'm gonna probably take one of the chains off right. and leave one of these chains on. Right. It's definitely a video pair. Yeah, you know, the, uh, the thing that we really try to do with this, you know, some people, they customize shoes, but it's like, all right, y'all just slap some paint on the shoe. No, I get it. You know, we try to make things that look like. You're tied it in all together. Right. You're, you're, you're made it personal. It's dope. And y'all do this for, for all the guests that come on? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah, every guest gets, basically kind of gets, Portions of their life stories uh, told you know, through the art of the sneaker. Yeah, through the art of the shit. Dope. As long as you happy, I'm Dope. happy. Fans no, happy and mission accomplished.